happy fusers. Today I want to talk about firing schedules. Now I'm not going to go into the really, really clever in-depth stuff about it. I've got my favourite fuser, Bob Leatherbarrow, who's going to give us a little introduction to the proper firing schedules and really what you need to think about after this one. But I just want to talk about the different types of levels of heat you can give glass to get different results. So to explain this best, I've made these sort of test tiles. And what we've got here is we've got some Glacier Blue 3 mil with a French vanilla stringer, which will test for reaction. We've got some Irid, Irid side up and Irid side down. We've got some Opaline, which will test for striking. We've got some ruby red tint or ruby pink tint. I'm one of the two, I think it's red. We've got a bit of uh, coarse for it and we've got some powder. We've got some Marini to see how they um, behave at different temperatures. We've got some 2 mil glass. We've got some dichroic with the dichroic down. And then we've got some dichroic on black with the dichroic up. So the, depending on how much heat work you give glass depends on the results you get. It's really good to do a test tile like this to see what happens at different temperatures. So starting at the beginning, you can um, fire as low as like a 700, which is like a... 1,295 degrees uh, Fahrenheit to get what I call a stick to tack. So this is when the glass is really just stuck to the other glass. It's still kind of sharp, the edges. There's no reaction between the reaction. The opal line, the glass hasn't uh, turned um, opaline and the uh, ruby pink tint also hasn't struck. So no, the, none of those have. You can kind of um, see the irid feeling on top. I always feel that irid, when you do it irid side down, slightly disappears. Um, so you can see that. You can see how the frit looks and how the powder looks. These were also strikers and you can see how they've changed colour. So the next one I would say is a standard tack fuse. This is about a 740, 750 Celsius. That's 1365, 1385 Fahrenheit. As you can see, the opaline still hasn't struck and the tint here hasn't struck. Um, the, you don't really have a reaction either. Um, the two mils gone kind of soft around the edges, the, the three mils stayed a bit thicker. Um, your Marini are still kind of clear. When you, we'll see on the full fuse, Marini tend to pull in when you do them on the full fuse. And then the underside um, detail in the middle always looks bigger than the top side. And on a tack fuse, they look about the same. Both of those look the same on each side. Um, you can get a feel of what dichroic looks like tack fused um, with the dichroic side up and down, which is nice. That's the black one and that's on the clear. So you can see it's just a little bit softer. The edges are a bit softer um, and the Marini start to lose a bit of their de uh, definition, but not so much. The next stage is our contour fuse. Now this is sort of a halfway between a tack fuse and a full fuse. Um, and with those, it, the glass has really softened and you've lost some definition. I would say my contour fuse is around 780 to 790 degrees Celsius. That's about 1,435 to 1,465 Fahrenheit. Everything gets a bit softer. Um, you can see that the opaline has mostly struck. It's still a bit light, but it's, it's getting its kind of color in. Um, unfortunately, this stringer fell off, but you can see on this one that it's still, it's still not really getting reaction, um, but on reactions. Um, our Marini has started to pull in. If you look at it, this side and this side, the, the center is bigger underneath than on top. And we're starting to get a little bit blobby, as are the other bits of glass. It's all softening. Now, the reason we've done two at this temperature is to show you the difference between these two. Also, I have a tip sheet um, about gold bearing pink tints. There's a few of them and this one which is the gold uh, ruby red or the ruby pink and burnt uh, scarlet tint are three, um, three of them. You need to have a two hour soak which is they call it a soak but it's also a hold at um, 663 celsius that's 1225 fahrenheit and if you hold at two hours that makes these pink glasses strike and if you don't they won't strike and you will not get this really lovely pink colour. Everything else is pretty much as you see it. After that, we go on to our full fuse. So full fuse, we've got our reaction coming in. You know, uh, irid, um, it sort of, you know, sort of see the kind of irid on all of these, you can see it um, better. But, you know, again, I'd say if you flip it, you can kind of see the irid side um, on this one. Uh, unlike dichroic, you can see it both sides. Irid, you really only see it down 
from the other side. I sort of feel it, for me, it vanishes. Even if you hold it up into the light, you're just, you know, the irid sort of gone. So I'm like, either irid is always up, or irid, my favorite way of firing irid is you fire it this way onto the kiln shelf with the irid side to the kiln shelf, and then you get this really nice um, metallic sheen to your pieces. And I do that a lot. As you can see here, the Marini have really pulled in um, from, so they really kind of close in on a full fuse at the top, which is why I often kind of do full fuses with the Marini on the kiln shelf and the glass on top, um, so that then they stay opened out like this. When you get to a full fuse, it's all melted into one piece. So your tack fuse, you've got all the texture, full fuse, no texture left, all one piece. And as long as all your glass is compatible, this is probably much more stable than this. This has got way more going on and way more likely to break than this is. So this needs a bigger anneal than this. Um, you can then, after that, you can slump. So slumping is actually at a lower temperature than full fuse, but it helps shape the glass in different ways using different moulds. That is a brief explanation of the different types of fusing and the different um, results you can get from it. It's great in your kilns to do a test tile like this, see what happens at different temperatures, and then you know you can take a Sharpie and you can write on the back, this was a 7.15 firing for 15 minutes. Because what you have to also take into consideration is the time. So I could t go to 7.15 and hold for longer and eventually the whole piece would melt together, rather like this. So this piece was a tack fuse that unfortunately was misprogrammed and on the kiln it had a two hour hold at 7.15. And after two hours of holding at 7.15, it's pretty much like a full fuse. But it worked out fine in the end and it's still beautiful. So you need to watch your time as well as your temperature. The most important thing to remember with fusing is that you can always increase your temperature and fire again, but you can never go back. So if you'd start at attack fuse and go, oh, this is a bit spiky and I want it more, you can put it back in the kiln and fuse it a little bit more so it becomes more like this. But if you fuse it like this, you can never go back to this. So always go a lower temperature to start with. And then if you want, you can always put it back in and fuse it a second time to get it a bit more heat work. Just remember, it's already had some heat work, so it'll have softened once already. So don't go too far or more, otherwise you might again end up like this. The more you know your own kiln, the better it is. There's no set firing schedule for every project. If you wanted to repeat this and get exactly the same results, you wouldn't be able to because your kiln is different. You need to know your kiln, work out the temperatures, make test tiles like this, write the temperature on the back, and then you always know, for this particular kiln, I want that result, I'm going to 750 for 15 minutes. And you need to do this for every single kiln you've got because one kiln 750 and another kiln 750 might be a completely different result. And if you're going to someone else's kiln and firing theirs, awesome, have you done some test tiles so I can see the result I want? If not, can you show me examples of work at different temperatures so I can decide what I'd like? So this shows what happens when you stack more layers on top of each other. If you don't know, glass, when it's full fused, it wants to be six millimetres thick. That's that thick. So that is two layers of glass together. When you full fuse it, we'll get your six millimetres. So if you only put one layer in and full fuse it, you get what's called dog boning, where the glass is trying to pull up to be six millimetres thick. It can't do it, but it tries, and you get what's called dog boning. If you get two layers together, it pretty much ends up exactly the size it started off with. You can see this was a three by three piece of glass, two layers thick, it stayed three by three. You can see on the cross section of this one where I've fused two together, the top layer always tries to wrap around over the bottom layer. The more stacks you get, the thinner the top layer will be as it spreads, and the bottom layer always feels a bit smaller. You can see it more on this one. So this was three stacks of three by three. As you can see now, it's more than its original size as it spread, trying to get to the six millimeters. And if you look at the top, if you look at the cross section, the bottom layer is quite thick. The next layer up is thinner, and then the top layer is the thinnest as it's trying to spread over the whole area of the glass. And then this is four. You see four pieces of three by three 
have turned into a square by four by four. Now I'd say that's slightly thicker than six mil now, but if I'd given it more heat work for longer, it would have spread eventually to become six mil. But now you can see the top layer is super, super thin. And then the other layers are slightly thicker. That top layer trying to spread all the way over everything to uh, cover the whole bit and the other layers bigger. And this can be a great way to make a piece of jewelry. As you butterfly them together and melt again, how pretty is that? And you can fuse that and make a new piece. It's like a little pattern bar. So using this can help you create lots of different designs, but knowing also how your glass will spread will really help you in your fusing journey. So I hope this little explanation on different amounts of heat and length of time that you fuse for gives you different results, will help you on your fusing journey to get you the perfect results you want. Up next, we've got fabulous Bob Leatherbarry. You must go out and get his book to really understand a firing schedule and how to get the perfect results. It's definitely one for all of us to have in our fuser's kit. Until next time, happy fusing.